All right, other alkaloids, uh, morphine is a type of alkaloid, um, which is used as a painkiller. Um, let me get the point of the, uh, get this real quick. Um, uh, as an analgesic, and then there's been a lot of compounds that are um, derivatives of morphine, like codeine and oxycontin and those types of, uh, of, of painkillers. Um, which are very addictive. Uh, because morphine is very addictive. Um, it's attained from the from the poppy flower. They actually are found in in the seeds of poppies. That's why they say if you eat a poppy seed muffin, you shouldn't go get a drug test because it actually has tiny amounts of morphine that the drug test can actually detect, even though it has no influence on your body. Um, and it's been a painkiller for quite some time. Um, it's very addictive, uh, and patients using it long term must take um, uh, increasing doses in order to reach the same effect because your body kind of gets immune to it. Um, codeine is also present in the opium poppy. That I did not know, but in smaller amounts. That's interesting. Um, I thought codeine was completely a synthetic drug for morphine, but apparently small amounts of, co of, of codeine are found in the poppy. Um, codeine is used for less severe pain, but it's still very addictive. All right, so here's the difference between morphine and codeine, not much. It is a pretty interesting molecule. It might be a little confusing at first, but this kind of bridge, that bridge head right there, see that, that blacker bonds right there? Um, that's just, it means it's coming out of the page towards you. It's kind of an interesting molecule. Uh, but you can see that you have these two OH groups, which makes morphine relatively uh, polar. Not very polar because you have a lot more carbons, but because you have two OHs, um, it's much more like polar than codeine. Notice codeine, the only difference is a, a methyl group right here. Um, so there was a scientist, Bayer, his last name is Bayer. You've probably heard of him. Um, he's the guy that also made aspirin. It's also a company. Um, he, he developed the company. Um, he did a lot of research on aspirin, and this is probably in the mid to late 1800s. So we're talking quite a bit of uh, a long time ago. And he did some research with aspirin. He found that acetylsalicylic acid, which is kind of fun to say, is the main component in aspirin. However, the body had a, had a hard time absorbing it into the body. So what he did was he took all of the OH groups on the molecule and he capped them with an acetate group and he made it much less polar. This way it was able to cross through the blood brain barrier and be able to get into the brain and, and be able to have a pain uh, a killing effect. Um, so he did the same thing with morphine. He found that morphine, when if you, if you take it, it does not really absorb through the blood brain barrier because of the polar OH groups. So what he did is he, he took the knowledge he learned from aspirin and he put it on morphine and he capped these off with acetate groups and made them much more nonpolar. All right, and he called it hero morphine. So imagine you put a hero in front of the word morphine. Um, hero morphine because it's, it, 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 re, it had a much quicker um, a analgesic effect on, on the patient. It was immediate. Immediately, uh, they had no pain. Um, it made them feel good. Um, and then they eventually shortened the name of it. So rather than hero morphine, they took the hero and then the INE um, and they got this word, which we now pronounce as heroin. Um, so basically what heroin is, is morphine where these groups are capped off as acetate groups. And I believe they show you the structure here. Well, here's kind of the, um, I guess, more of the details. Um, heroin is very addictive, illegal drug, is made from morphine. It is much less polar than morphine, making it more soluble in the body's fat cells. In fact, it's, um, the, the, it's not just the fat cells, but it's able to cross through our blood-brain barrier a lot easier. This makes heroin two to three times more potent than morphine um, with the pain relief. So uh, here are the two OH groups, and then if you cap them off with these acetate groups, notice you don't have the hydrogen bonding anymore. Uh, you make this much more nonpolar. This can absorb into the brain very, very easily, um, and it gives you an instantaneous uh, uh, effect on it. All right, so pretty interesting. Um, quinine is another interesting compound. Um, uh, they talk about it's isolated from, from the bark of a, of a tree in the Andes. And quinine um, has a bitter taste, uh, and it's in seltzer water. 
Um, if you ever see like seltzer water, there's ones that have quinine and those that do not have quinine. Um, and if you get a drink, an alcoholic drink, um, if you get it with a seltzer water that has quinine, it for sure has a, a different kind of like taste like to it. Um, it's also UV active. The way that you can tell if a seltzer water has quinine, FYI, is if you put a, a, um, a, a UV light to it or a black light. I think you can do a black light. And if the water glows blue, that's because you have quinine in it. It's kind of interesting. Um, so it is a powerful fever reducer, which that is very, I did not know that. However, I did know that it's used in the treatment of malaria. Um, but I did not realize it has a, it's a fever producer. Um, it's found in tonic water. I think I said seltzer water. It's tonic water. There is a difference. If you buy like tonic water, it has quinine. If you buy seltzer water, it does not have quinine in it. So, and again, it gives it that characteristic bitter taste to it. Um, I think next time I get a fever, I'm going to, I'm going to take my, my, um, like Tylenol with, uh, like tonic water, see how that works. Um, atropine is also another compound um, called, it's from the deadly nightshade plant. I believe atropine is kind of, it can, uh, you know, a certain amount of it, it can kill you. Um, let's see, during the Renaissance, women used the juice of the nightshade berries to enlarge the pupils of the eyes. I guess, yeah, I think I remember this uh, history where th they thought that having larger pupils made you look, you know, more attractive. Um, actually, you know what totally reminds me of right now? Um, you know uh, uh, the cat from Shrek? Um, uh, and you remember when, you know, he looked very sweet and cute, his eyes got very big and the pupils got really big. Um, so I guess that's kind of what they're trying to go for. Um, however, it, it, in very high amounts, um, it can kill you because it relaxes all the smooth muscle and interferes with nerve impulses. So there you go. Um, all right, let's stop right there because we're about to kind of change gears and talk more about the chemistry of amines.